Hello, you crazy TJ owners. LJs, I don't want to exclude you. Uh, Darren and Harley and Critters with Wee TJ. All right, so we are doing emergency break. Yes. You know one thing that I think is funny with the 4x4 crowd and the hot rod crowd, whatever you call them, is their half-done rigs. Come on, people. We can do better. We can do better. And I'm trying to do it myself. So here, this is what we got here. Got an emergency. I changed my axle a lot. I got a Dana 60, whatever it is. East Coast gear came from them. I got new emergency brakes. Here's my sway bar, the mounts, the, the factory uh, emergency brakes. I sprayed these to make them all pretty looking. Used to mount up top above the you know rubber isolators going there for the sway bar link. But I came up with the idea, hey, why don't I use a ribbon? So if you don't know, these ribbons come from right there, Weld Metals Online. So you can get these ribbons, and this is eighth inch aluminum. You can get 16th. So I, I bought a whole bunch of eights. I got a whole bunch of 16s. And I got a pack of steel too. 16th and eighth steel. What's the purpose for them? The purpose for them is welding, I mean, practice welding. Welding before you actually weld on whatever you're gonna weld. Uh, so you actually grab them out and go to work. Run some beads before you actually go down and weld on what you're going to. So I, that is one thing that's really helped from watching him is seeing him. I mean, the guy welds day in and day out. And even he does it. He'll grab some of these ribbons and he'll go to work just to kind of get himself into rhythm before he goes and does work on a part that's irreplaceable. So either way, we are building. This is going to be minor, just the tabs. So um, this hooks up over by the emergency brake right on the axle, left or right, doesn't matter. And of course, this goes to the tunnel right underneath where you set. Uh, but it needs to be secured somewhere. I'm looking at these brackets right here from in there to there. It looks like it's about roughly an inch. Perfect. Yeah. Let me see if I thought right. Yeah, I want to make sure I got decent light right here. It's going to be this up here. Um, it won't go like that. It'll go like that. This is what I came up with, and I don't know. I mean, it's... Okay, so the emergency brake cable comes through there. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, the, the TJ, I mean, the, on the 44 or 35 or whatever, they got it up here. Man, I wish it was up there. But I just don't see how. Now this does come straight out. I like it. Right there. See the bolt? Yeah, that's what they got going on over there. So I'm not real excited about that. But it is what it is. Cable comes straight through. Nothing wrong with that. This is the only place it fits. If you're rocking a sway bar. I mean, it is. Uh, I mean, I don't know if I'll... I don't foresee me... I just... I don't foresee me switching to a... Um, what's that called? The Anarok or whatever, the Curry. I'll probably do it on the front, even Terraflex. I'll probably do it on the front, but I don't, I don't see me doing it on the back. I don't. It's just. All right, so what do we do? Okay, so here's the brackets. I bent it. Let's see if I can get a little bit better angle. It actually turned out pretty decent. Um, I may put a little rubber isolator piece of foam, maybe if I find a sleeve or whatever, and even up here, it'd be kind of nice. Mind you, once again, we drive our Jeeps. We drive our Jeeps, and so this may not be very important, but one is we have to pay us an inspection here in North Carolina as far as once yearly, 
and uh, they're pretty forgiving on your, a lot of your 4x4 stuff but uh, emergency brakes have to work and so if they're on there yeah well if you got a man you, you need it anyways but um, it's nice especially for trailing of course in other videos I showed about moving this over here basically tapping over here on this side running along inside the body and bring it over here that's the way to do it that makes it really nice as opposed to it being over here yeah, of course exhausting and yeah will be soon but here's the other side here's the bracket right there yeah so what do I got to do down here what do I got to do I got to run my locker the lockers one of probably the next thing I'm moving on to okay so ox lockers finally that's what most people are here for they want to know where in the world did he mount the cables that was like one of my biggest questions where do you mount these cables now you can get these things in three different versions you can get them in manual that means you got the cable with the another lever I did want to go that route that seems the most simplistic seems the most simplistic and cool factor yeah it's definitely there but where I mean TJ is already so limited for space inside we're gonna put another lever so uh, if you want to keep the cable and you don't want to go air now the air I don't know entirely about it I think I think from what I understand your airline plums right into here and then you run a yeah I think that's what it is I think there's a fitting that goes in there but I do know this is the same cable whether it's manual or the electric now the electric uh, it's not a solenoid and we're gonna show you back here it's rather they want you to um, call it a servo because they they're saying it's a servo but either way I wasn't real excited about this 90 degree turn uh, looks like there's no way around it yeah so it does still um, cycle in there fine it's a heavy-duty stainless steel cable either way so wraps up there I originally when I was getting this right here I thought I was gonna end up wrapping around here and mounting it back here somewhere I don't know or up to, I, I, I had no idea no idea uh, let me show you where we went um, I did put a a little mount right there a little bit of clearance between the spring in there over here now I mounted put a couple of those right there and I got about two and a half inches of clearance there between the frame and cable so I mounted it back here so this is my radius arm so it kind of give you an idea oh this is the front control arm mount that I'm going through right there that I put a couple quarter inch 20 bolts and I got my grommet oh, I forget what those things are called they're not grommets um uh, strap cable straps or cable clamps maybe that maybe they're called cable clamps uh, cool thing I did go with the servo like I said you can twist this body so you can mount this any direction so I got that turned up towards the top so the wiring is going to be coming in plugging in from the side uh, I think this is out of the environment enough to where it's not going to be impacted by uh, weather too much rain mud what have you you know it's on the inside of the frame now going to the cable I did do full dropout full compression and this is this is the setup that I came up with as far as giving me enough movement right there up and down let's check out the back now it's coming off from where are we I'm gonna go around the back side and show you where that's coming through but uh, you can see the exhaust right there there's the shock let me come around this side you can see it coming up through here big old loop there's the track bar running see the track bar we got generous amount oh shoot about three inches of gap uh, between the um, trek bar in that line here's another one of the ribbons that I was talking about that I've used for holding the um, emergency brake cables I got one right there now ironically I was able to 
use the factory gas tank mounts right there. So, yeah, I had mentioned, well, in another video I'd showed that I'd switch to a generic tank back there. So that does set back further. However, the way the, uh, the mount or the carrier for the gas tank, the factory gas tank, it does have an L bent right there. I think you still should be able to mount your locker and servo the way that I have. And I have uh, just enough room on full compression that it's not going to hit. And of course I got tons of room for dropout is with this uh, setup right here. So the back was actually <sighs> back was actually fairly easy to get that um, set up. But uh, the ribbons I think the ribbons are cool. I think um, that that little bit right there having the ribbon set up right there I know it's only about 8 10 inches it gave quite a bit of support to this cable to keep it from uh, going in slapping over and hitting the track bar and such uh, so let me show you the back axle and then I got a couple complaints um, I mean hopefully I'm not complaining I I'm, I'm I feel like I'm a real person I I feel like I want to show you my frustrations I don't sugarcoat everything and I tell you what on our construction channel um, confident home solutions uh, I've caught a lot of ca caught a lot of grief because there's different tool manufacturers that I'm not the I don't drink one particular kool-aid and uh, I think if I would have went easier on this one tool brand our channel would already be larger but that being said um, let's check check out this ox locker back here so the cable uh, man super heavy duty uh, cover there now the cable here I'm not disappointed about this I kind of knew what I was getting into but I'm just bringing this up to you that you could possibly let me let me do a back shot for you I don't know if you can kind of see that I'm trying I kind of got the camera at the same plane as to what the axle is or the height sorry about that uh, so you kind of have an idea where that cable is well it's still the cable is still somewhat up about an inch above the bottom of the tube but you do still have um, a chance of snagging something with that okay but if I'm worried about that I definitely would be worried about this one of my this is something that's actually really annoyed me is that the calipers are mounted so low I don't I don't understand that I don't understand why the calipers are there now I this is my first day in a 60 uh, I don't understand why the calipers aren't up higher so I I almost think over this maybe I think these are I can't remember if these are negative 38 offset I think they are you know so you would come in a little bit but man I have I've drugged these things over a lot of course these are new here but I've drugged them over a lot so I know I'm eventually gonna hit them maybe I won't like I said I'm gonna baby this thing the more and more I just I wheeled pretty hard for quite a while and I'm I am a little bit different of a uh, 4x4 person now so I don't know if I'll wheel as hard which I think is funny because I've done so many more modifications and now I'm not gonna probably wheel as hard but I do know as your Jeep becomes more capable uh, unless you're on certain trails you're actually not even gonna have to wheel as hard I mean my son's Jeep is proof of that because some of the obstacles he he goes over uh, different people myself included have sat back and were like oh that thing should have struggled more than it did either way um, cable let's get back on track so yeah that's uh that's the back side of the cable right there and I'm gonna try to get a shot straight up So I think we're good to go right there. I'm, I'm liking that. I'm liking that. 
So I will say it's been fun. This has been a um, this has been a fun process getting everything lined up to where it absolutely works uh, to where everything is uh, functioning as far as droop out compression and all that but yeah <laughs> I'm really ready to get this thing on the road I am um, we are taking right after I wrap this up here uh, I am I just got the track bar mount for the for the front axle so we're gonna get my track bar corrected today so I've been hard at work doing what makes me money and so I actually got a day off and we're gonna try to fix my track bar later today so you'll see that in a week or so all right see us